Welcome to the 99 Hustles podcast. I'm your host, Nick Carter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we're joined by a friend of the show. Um, this is our guy, uh, Crypto Kwame. Uh, Kwame, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up with y'all? You know, living the dream, man. We're, uh, we're in the midst of uh, a, a financial awakening, and, and we're, it's, a, it's an honor to have you on the show to kind of give your... Uh, give your viewpoint on, on how you see things playing out. Um, but for those that don't know, uh, Kwame is a uh, former military to, to, uh, to millionaire. He was a 13 year vet serving the army uh, and is now serving the community by providing financial literacy and economic empowerment. He is uh, the co-founder of Capital Gains Investments and he's a philanthropist, uh, author, instructor and dedicated advocate for sharing generational knowledge. Uh, now I know I said a lot there, but, but for the, for those that, um, when someone asks like, you know, what's this dude about? What's, uh, what would you say is like the, the answer you give to people or the answer you hope people give when they, when they answer that question? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm no longer the co-founder of Catholic Investment Group. I'm just the CEO of uh, Success of the Marathon. So, you know, uh, that, that's what I'm on now. Oh, but, he, uh, he bossed up thing- since the last time we talked to him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> my apologies. I'm also a board member of uh, something CC. That's another uh, nonprofit company uh, uh, business that I'm with also. But what I'm about is the community. You know, I, I feel like it's very important to shape the minds of the future, you know, and we are the future now and the future ahead of us, but also the next generation. You know, we're always being told how we should live our life. You know, what's right, what's wrong. You're crazy to think this way. Your dreams are too big. And then when you do it, those same people that was telling you no, 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 it's like, oh man, can you show me how to do this? I should have listened to you four years ago. I should have, and it's like they didn't support your dream. And I feel like that is one of the biggest things, you know. I I alter people's reality and I change the limits of what they thought was possible for them, just with knowledge. I don't sell you a dream. I don't say if you give me this, I'm gonna return this. If you do that, I'm gonna do no. I say learn this financial literacy wave because. I honestly like like there's never been a wave like this. I, I feel like yeah. even with we where we have rights and we have marches and we have all this stuff happening, we're in an empowerment era where we're like, you know what, the stuff that used to go before, we ain't okay with that. Even women the same way, right? They're they're, they're empowered with their bodies, right? Yeah. Before they would have been shamed for some of the stuff that's going on on the internet. Now it's like, you know what, I'm on my skin, I'm on my temple, and I, hey, this is my body. Hey, I'm making money. And I think, I, think, wrong. I think the biggest thing about that like, is, is ownership, right? Whether that's yeah. ownership of, of your uh, own thoughts, ownership of your own Identity. platform. Like, we're, like you mentioned, we're in this empowerment movement and era because I think a lot of the things that were um, not accessible to most to, to people uh, that look like us uh, are now accessible. I mean, you have the internet, so you can literally connect with people that figured out the different ways to make, you know, make themselves financially free. And what we're witnessing is, you know, people are using their platform to kind of show light to what they're doing. That's kind of the whole point of this podcast is to, you know, to spotlight people that are out there doing things that, you know, other people are maybe afraid to do just because they haven't seen someone um, that looks like them achieve it. So that's like the, uh, the, you know, the whole genesis of this whole podcast. And, um, you know, you mentioned success is a marathon. Um, That's, that's your brand. That's your company. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that and what exactly that is? Oh, so what Success of Marathon represents, you know, I am the CEO, not the sole founder. You know, it's a bunch of people that came together and helped me create this great brand. But we're all about success over time. You know, we don't want to be successful for a year or five years. You know, everybody's like, what are you going to do with the next five years of your life? We're focused on the next century. You know, we want to make sure we set up our grandkids, our great grandkids, our great, great, great grandkids. So when it's time for them to go to Mars, they have that currency already. They are they 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 already have the knowledge of how to sustain their food and how to stay healthy, mind, body, and soul wisdom. Like we're trying to be basically a one-stop shop for everything when it comes to financial literacy and life. You know, it's it, it, financial literacy opened doors for you in a different way. You know, when 
I'll enter a room and somebody's like, oh, I want to open a bank account. I want to open a business bank account. They're like, what you do? And I show them. Their interaction is totally different with me. Oh, I always want to do that. How I do this? And, I, I, and when I'm talking to people and I see their interaction, this is what we created with Census Marathon. We can have a general conversation with anybody in any room. And they look at us like, man, they know what they're talking about. Like we're, we're we're literally showing the progression, right, of different people that didn't know anything much about financial literacy. Yeah. Wow. Now they're giving classes. You know, they're giving classes weekly, daily, helping people, assisting people, change their lives. Yeah. Yo, Kwame, you know what's interesting about about your story to me is like I've never been in. I, I haven't been in the military, but the things I've heard is that you know it's it's strong like structure, order, hierarchy, and then I think about that you know, mixed with what you said about being original and thought and stepping outside of the box and everything like that. So like, did you have like an awakening moment at some point in your career is like, you know, I'm going to like not go through this set path, but in a set hierarchy and I'm like going to do my own thing. Like wh when was that like moment if you had so, All right, so, you know, they give us this big, great speech. They gave us, the, they, they preached to us. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, man, you join the military, you're gonna make this. Mm -hmm. And if you do 20 years, you'll be retired for the rest of your life, you never gotta work. Yeah, yeah. But then they tell you, well, you only gonna get 50% after 20 years. So if you can't live off 100 percent your check now and you're living paycheck to paycheck, imagine 20 years from now when you have kids going to college, mm -hmm. you know. So now you're thinking, like, you're cool, I can't afford that. Let me do 20 years of contracting also. Now that's 40 years of your life gone, right? You join the military at 18. You join the military at 20, now you're 60 years old. I always, always said this, I don't want to get a million dollars when I'm 63. And that's when you get your, 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 your T, TP or you get your IRA or whatever you're off, whatever. That's when you really go get it. After all those years, I didn't want to be a millionaire at 63. That's way too long of my life. My life is gone. At 63, I'm going to go to uh, Puerto Rico <laughs> or Vegas <laughs> and go to sleep. I mean, by the pool. I mean, what I'm going to do? I'm not going to enjoy it the same way. So I said, you know what? Even now I should be enjoying my life a little more, but yeah, knowing that you have the process and you have opportunities out there, they kind of shut it down. Like even when I do classes on the on military basis, right? Or I talk to my military friends, they're like, yeah, you know, you can come get my people a class and this, this, and this, but you can't have them sign up, but you can't tell them certain things mm -hmm. because we don't want them to, that, yeah. that 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 sign of yeah. hope, like you know what? I don't have to be in the army twenty years. Yes, I don't right. have to get yelled at every single day. I don't have to get to. When I was in the military, my first experience was I was getting called stupid, right? Because I didn't know I didn't know anything. So you're like, okay, what I do with these boxes? Where I put this? Where I put that? Yeah, yeah. I was in logistics, working in a warehouse. I didn't know anything, but they'd be like, yeah, you know, uh. Man, are you stupid or something? You don't know this, you don't know that. I'm like, no, it's my first day. It's my first couple months. I don't know anything. Yeah. That's supposed to teach me. They want to keep you like that. You know what I mean? Keep you not exactly not, not doing for self. You know what I mean? Exactly. Then then I become a sergeant, right? I become a yeah. sergeant in like two and a half, three years. I, I get promoted fast, but I redeploy rapidly. I was in the special forces unit. Mm -hmm. And you start seeing all this stuff and you jumping out of planes for no reason. You have the way, like, man, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. What am I doing this? Every single time we go on deployment, we're like, you know what? When we get back, we all go on to Vegas. We don't save up money and money tax free over there. We're chilling. We get back and it ain't the same. It's, it's like, damn, man. Like everybody life done moved on without us. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't want over there for six, seven months, eight months, nine months. Your life was on pause when you left. You get back, everything has changed. Yeah. You know, everything is different now. You got, you got people uh, doing DoorDash at the house. That wasn't even a thing back then, but they, they were delivering something while, <laughs> while he was gone. Yeah. So you, <laughs> your life is totally different. Everybody's just changed while you're gone. You come back and you, it's like you, it's like you don't fit in. So it's like I, you, and, and and then so now, so now you're sergeant. Um now and you know, all these different new avenues to make money, um, uh, DoorDash, Uber, drop shipping, all this stuff is out there. Um did you, was crypto the first thing you got into or did you, was no. there other types of hustles that you, you started first? So, I mean, all that stuff was even a, a thing yet. So the first thing I got okay. into, I worked at Jimmy Jazz while I was in the army. I worked at Jimmy, well, 
I wrote that favorite 21 first, then Jimmy Jack. Everybody know I wrote that favorite 21. But then I wrote that. <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> Look, man, when you have money, you can talk about all the, yeah, all the dirty true, things you had true. to do. You Success know? is a marathon, man. Yeah. It's a marathon, bro. Then, then I went to, to start Jimmy somewhere. Jazz. Yeah, then I went to Jimmy Jazz, get some shoes and stuff like that. So, but then, because that's what I didn't even know the, the sneaker hustle. Like before, mm. we could get all the shoes and we could have been reselling and all that. I didn't know any of that, you know? Yeah, so yeah. now I'm like, okay, I just want some shoes. That's, that's what I went there for. And it wasn't working. When we were deployed, there was something called dinar. It's like the currency of, of Afghanistan, their money, right? You go buy like a hundred million dollars of their money for like a thousand dollars. But to them, it's like paper. They don't care about the money. So that's why the currency was so cheap to buy. That's the same logic. When I think of it now, it's crypto. You're buying a bunch of a currency for a low now, hoping that eventually and they go up because after time after every war. We leave, we have to build up that uh, economy again. We have to build up that country again, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. So we fund them, we fix everything, we rebuild it. We've been at war forever, you know, with the Middle East. So, you know, it's no stop really in sight. So it's like, you know, learning all this stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. So the NAR didn't work. Uh, I done did all the name Ponzi scheme stuff with people, the MLM stuff. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. you don't have to sell anything. But if you get three people to sign up, and then yeah. they get three people to sign up, and then you get a bonus. <laughs> uh, all, all that stuff that didn't work. And then crypto was one of those things. I just it was YouTube one day, stocks. Mm-hmm. You know, I was always in the stocks. But I, one time I popped up, and then it was like one of those things. You know how you get on YouTube, and you find a new artist, and it's, they one song, like, hey, who this? And you listen to our, all the songs, hey, man, I've been under a rock this whole time. That's how I feel <laughs> crypto. And... What's crazy was right when I seen that, I was like, man, I seen that movie dope. And they was talking about Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's it, true. It, it kind of like clicked at the same time. Like, man, let me look into this for real. That, like a whole week straight, I was looking at uh, somebody named uh, Trevon James. He was one of the bigger people on YouTube uh, with crypto. I was following his page, following some other people, and they were making the killing. They was making about a hundred thousand a day. They was telling on crypto, but the thing ended up being something that got seized by the government and it got shut down. So everybody was trying to, you know, trying to sell their coins at the same time really fast. It's like, damn, man, I lost some money on that. And this is 2017, you know? And this is when it's like peaking. And they say, you know, it crashed 2018. And everybody taking their money out. Everybody's scared. It started going up again. Then it go back down in August. So everybody, you know, I ain't messing with crypto no more. And then I go to Korea, right? I'm still in the army. I, I go to Korea. I don't have any way to sell because I didn't know nothing about no VPNs. Like when I say it, when I forget out of crypto, all I don't know was buy it and hold it. So I didn't swap. I didn't know about Monero. Monero is the coin for Korea, for South Korea. I didn't know any of this stuff. So I'm just sitting there, my coins in my wallet, phone not connected, no internet, internet bad. So like, whatever coins I have, I got it. Mm. I said, just today, somebody was talking about Stellar Lumens, the coin, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had so many Stellar Lumens for so cheap. But I'm talking about one cent. Bunch of coins, sold them. When I said that 52 cent that one, I was like, man. And I'm, when I said like that the very next day, I sold it took off. Wow. Wow. So it's like trial so, and error. So so you're so you're in, in South Korea. How long are you there? Uh for almost a year and a half. So for a year and a half, you have no way of selling your, any of your crypto positions. I didn't I didn't know what VPNs was and all that. Because mm. you could. You put the VPN, you put a different location, boom, you can sell regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, while I was there, I could have took advantage of signing up with Binance, the better exchanges. Like, I just didn't know what I know now, you know? Yeah. So is this is this your uh, humble way of saying that you are the creator of Diamond Hands? Not, not, not a Cuba Sarconians, but yeah. <laughs> Diamond <laughs> Hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Diamond Definitely. Hands. I had to hold for a whole year and a half. I, I couldn't do anything. It was, it was the type of thing where I had one phone with my crypto on it or whatever. And it was, I got so close to trading in this phone or selling this phone in Korea and forgot I had crypto on it. That's how much I was like, whatever, man, I don't even care. I, man, I need $100. Let me sell this phone. Then, right before I finished the transaction, I, oh, yeah, bro, I can't sell it to you. I got my uh my two, two ID uh, authenticator, authenticator on this mm-hmm. phone. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So I had, so, I had to so, write it out. So a year and a half goes by, you come back, and, and, and what does your wallet look like? Uh, look, I was I, I was trying to read the numbers like Floyd. Let, let, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, like I'll get an army. 
<laughs> I'm getting out of the army. As soon as I look, I took down, I could see my wallet. I'm like, cool. Hey, I'm getting out of the army. I I I get back September. I left the uh Korea December 2019. This okay. is right before the pandemic and all that stuff just started. So mm-hmm. as I'm getting back in, in January of 2020, pandemic happened. They let us go home every day. I said, you know what, man, let me do Instacart. Okay. I'm thinking, hey, I made my two hundred dollars a day on Instacart. Let me do that. That's six thousand dollars a month. That's still money. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, I don't gotta work. If I figure out this is good enough, create a business, find a way. So I said, you know what? Let me just see if I know what I'm talking about. Every day on Facebook, I would tell people about stocks, what the stocks to buy, what options to buy, crypto, and I was just doing it for free. One day somebody hit me up, but like, man, you should do a Zoom. I'm like, what's that? They're like, it's a platform where you get on and you can just teach. And I'm like, okay, I think I guess I'll try it. Yeah. First ever Zoom get like 53 people. Wow. And I'm like, man, people really be watching me do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I get off the Zoom, it's like a couple people stay on. They're like, so when's the next one? I'm like, oh no, this this is just me talking. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, nah, all right, you gotta do this more. Them, like, you gotta do this more. So I said, you know what? Yeah. All right, let's figure it out. Remember, and next I- you know, Aristotle, right? Aristotle and Isaac, right? Isaac, you slack. Shout out to Aristotle. Shout out to Isaac. Shout out to Isaac. Yeah. Yeah, so both of them, like, I'm learning from them because I didn't even know what was what. Like like I said, I'm putting out options, but I don't know how to read a chart. I don't know if I'm right, but it's working, right? It's not hard to guess Tesla was doing good during the pandemic. Tesla was killing, right? So <laughs> I'm learning. Okay, cool. I was teaching me stuff. Aristotle teaching me stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? I said, let me, let me set up a Discord, you know? Let me see if it worked. And from there on, from learning from them to they helped me get the foundation of what I'm doing now. So like, I'm forever grateful for meeting them and I'm forever grateful for Aristotle. You see my, look, my page went from 600 followers the last time we spoke. I had 4,000 followers when I went to Miami the weekend of the Floyd fight. And now I'm at 13,000 followers just because Aristotle reposted me, you know, on his page. So it's like, it's all appreciation. Like, it's like I said, like I give everybody flowers. I'm not saying I did it all by myself because I never did. But to where I'm at now, from where I started, it's truly amazing. Like, I'm happy to be on this journey and learn what I know and about credit, crypto, Airbnbs, Toro, Air- Airbnb arbitrage, how to flip business credit, how to flip personal credit, how to leverage credit, how to build credit. Like, learning all the stuff and the amount of time that I did and being good at it. Because you can say you know something mm-hmm. and people don't get results from it. When I'm like, yeah, you know, this uh, is this the Navy Federal play. We're going to do this and this. They're like, cool. But when I actually hear people like, yo, bro, I already started my Turbo app. I already got me a car. I already got my Navy Federal, Navy Fed check. I already started my account. I'm like, okay, people are actually making money already. Like, and that's the, that's the whole point of it, it's helping people change their life because it's, I always say financial literacy is a gateway. It's not a gateway drug, but it's a gateway <laughs> to network. And once you network, you start seeing things different, like, like Crypto Quaver, right? I never, like, I met him at the Moray video shoot, right? And like I said, Moray, when I met Moray, Moray just had a song Quicksand, right, in Fayetteville. He was just a brand new artist, whatever. In Fayetteville, right? that's, that's where you're from. Now I'm from the Bronx, but that's, I mean, that's where I live at now. So, you know, this is like my second home. I've, I've been here like 13 years, so, you know, this is like my second home. Okay, okay. But, like, he's on the Double XL, you know, top top list or whatever, you know. He's out, he's out of uh, California doing stuff with artists and, you know, big artists and all that stuff. So, let's see the growth, right? But I met Quavo from that one conversation, right? Going to the video shoot. He takes me to Miami. I've been to Miami only twice. People think I live in Miami. That's how much I, I've been to Miami twice. And it changed my life. It changed the way I think. Like, like I said, the condo, $6,000 a month, you know, it's, it's so much money sitting on the table for anybody. And before, I'm like, shh, bro, let me tell you, let me, let me, let me play it on right. when everybody ain't talking. That's how I used to be. Yeah. And it was a thing with me. I ain't gonna put everybody on. And I don't think people realize it. Like, even with stocks. Remember when somebody was like, yo, uh, what's in your portfolio? And bro, I ain't gonna tell you what stocks yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, people want yeah. to keep them low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah actually, like, bro. It's definitely been like a, a different a different wave where people it's are totally less. different. Yeah, they're not, they're not trying to keep, it, keep the secrets to themselves. Like, what, what made you change? Like, did you, see, because it was seeing other people doing it? Or did you always, you just like trying to build up the confidence to actually feel like, I can actually talk about this. Like, it's just the way I grew up, the person that I am. I'm just a nice person in general. You know, like, it may not seem genuine because it's like when people meet me and they speak to me, they like, it's weird, bro. Like, you're really a good person. It's weird to 
for you to make it or whatever, be humble, whatever. I don't see it as that. I feel like I'm just talking to people. I just happen to know this stuff, but I feel like I'm just talking to people. Yeah. But look, I've been in a homeless shelters. I've been in foster care. I've been in all these type of different situations where I really didn't have it. Yeah. I mean, me, look, you think I'm lying. When I joined the army, that's when I went on my first ever flight. That's the first time I've ever stayed in a hotel. Now we stay in the hotel in a homeless shelter. You stay in one night. You stay in the main room with everybody, and then you get one night in a uh, hotel, and then they ship you out to the the main homeless shelter where you're gonna stay in. And I'm um, first year in high school, staying in this big room with six uh, with three bunk beds. My mother sleeping on the bottom. It's me, my sister, and my uh, little sibling sitting on the top. The six of us staying in one room. My mother washing her shirt, my shirts and stuff. My white tees. I'm lucky it was white tee season because. She washed my white tee, hang it up. And I, I go to school with that, the wrinkles and all. Like, so I grew up with nothing. So when I say, you know what, when I get to a point where I can get back, I'm going to. Every single holiday, I let people in the Discord free. I don't care if you make a million dollars. I don't care if you make six figures, right? Like, I want you to win. And some people think it's the opposite, right? If Think about it, right? This is how backward people think. If we're in a stock, penny stock, any stock, right? Blue chip stock. And it's making us a lot of money. Wouldn't it benefit that person? To tell a bunch of people to buy the same stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's how logic. that's how brainwashed people was back then. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's nah, true. Bro, I ain't gonna tell nobody about this stuff. That's stupid. Right. Now, I mean, I, I don't know where that came from, or if that's like a generational thing, but I've definitely we it's interesting. We're we're at that that age group where we're like we we were around before the internet, and like yeah. now we're seeing what the internet looks like when sure. everybody has access to it. And it's definitely, sh- I mean, there's good and bad on, you know, you, you can find good and bad on that, but the good to me is just things that are life changing. You know, you're, you're getting a chance to like connect with people that want to give game and, and they're not looking to, you know, take advantage of people because that's, I guess what everyone's used to. Everyone's used to like the fake profits coming back yeah. and trying to give like yeah. information, but it's really just another pyramid scheme. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah. Coming across somebody like you and, and, and other people you mentioned, you know, it's it's refreshing to hear that you know it's this like is decentralized. Yo. Yeah, information is decentralized. Same yeah. Crypto. yeah, I mean, and, and that kind of goes goes back to crypto and, and the whole the whole genesis on, on, yeah. on how that works. And it's it's interesting that crypto is what kind of got you started, and and it kind of fits your your life story to begin with. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it was so weird to 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 be in crypto in 2017, right? Like April, I think it was like April 23rd. April 14th, one of those days. And crypto goes down to six cents. Bitcoin goes to six cents for a split, like a split 10, 10, 15 seconds. One of those days you got to catch it. It's like the same way when these exchanges send somebody the wrong money and they cash out, hey, that's my money, too late now. I mean, I, I don't know, send it to another wallet, send it to another wallet. But to see crypto from then to now to where somebody that I know for a fact was not talking to me about crypto a month ago Two months ago, or even just as early as last year, December, it's not, bro. You got Shiba Swap because you got to do this. You got to get on this exchange. And if you use this, I'm looking at my friend like, bro, you really know this stuff. Like, yeah, bro. Like, he been in Discord one month, two months. And they're talking like they're teaching me something. I'm like, bro, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. Yeah. yeah, But now I know it's like, it's like, it's super dope, right? To the point where we see banks trying to block crypto transactions. We see Apple taking off the browser on Trust Wallet. Everybody's like, you know, they make it too much money. We got to figure out a way to slow it down. It's too loud. Yeah. Too way too loud. It's, and, it's neon green. It's, it's, it's Biden saying we're going to tax crypto higher now. Like it's why all of a sudden people mm-hmm. making money on crypto before now. Now that the people are making money on crypto, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, and so this is for, for, for our viewers that are already, already aware about crypto, right? Kwame, you, you got in the game last year. Now, the, the, the interesting thing about the pandemic is like crypto, like the bull run really took off for both Bitcoin, Ethereum and the altcoins as well. Um, so I guess, you know, those who are already familiar with crypto, Kwame, would you say that the altcoins were really how you came up last year or were you messing with like Bitcoin and Ethereum and like the major players? So I would say, honestly, when, so I, I first got into crypto in 2017. Okay. The... Last year, Doge, I was able to get a million Doge for four thousand dollars, right? Wow. And and that's what I'm saying. So those coins were, they were conversation pieces. Damn, bro, you still believe in Doge? It was a joke. Yeah. Like Doge coin 
took off because of Elon Musk. Absolutely. Once Elon Musk started talking about it, it started going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once the momentum of that, people started saying, you know what? We can do the same thing with our coins. Mm-hmm. And then everybody started making mean coins and everybody started making money. And then they got too smart for themselves to say, you know what? We could just take everybody money. Why wait? Why make money on the coin? As soon as they invest into the coin, we're gonna rug pull and take it. So it's like it was doing in a, great. In a rug people in a rug start getting greedy. Yeah, in a rug pool for for all of our non-advanced crypto uh, uh, listeners, a rug pool essentially is uh, a, a company or, or a group of people creating a coin that they know that once it gets to a certain point of investors and, and investor money, they're going to withdraw all the all the money from it and pretty much leaving everybody with nothing. Um, it's, nothing. you know, um, there was a couple cases that happened recently. Um, some celebrity investors were involved as well. And and because of that, now you hear a lot of people talking about, oh, we need regulation and, and things like that. So Mark Cuban got caught like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Recently. You know, and and, and let I also want to shout out the fact that we fee, both fees and I are those the people you were describing, Kwame. We we learned a lot of game from from your Discord <laughs> and, and, and from the game you gave out. Because I mean the, the terminology and stuff was like, you know, it's so like it's like a different language, you know, just probably like six months ago for us, it was like a different language. We got, we started talking with you, we got into discord yeah. and now, you know, you hear fees talking about rug pull for our, for our viewers. <laughs> <who's going. laughs> yeah. But, but that's crazy. Right. Like that fast, you get the stuff, you yeah, know, the terminology, absolutely. right. You start picking up on stuff right, right away. You know, if I was like, yeah, you, you did that Navy federal play. I, you know, I'm not talking about the stock. Yeah. You know exactly yeah. what I mean. You know, yeah. like, yeah. you know yeah. exactly what I mean. And, and that, right? that kind of goes back to what you said before about like, networking has been the biggest thing yeah. Yeah. that's less helped you is like once you start and once you start network i mean you start looking in, into more positive things and spending your time learning about things that can actually you know help you make money and just help you expand your expand your you know surroundings it becomes like your network so there's things you talk about now with your friends it's like oh you hear about this you hear about yeah, airbnb yeah. you hear about Turo. It's, it's like conversations that you know i think nick mentioned it you, you overheard like a conversation like recently over the weekend right like somewhere random uh oh you mean um uh no way at the barbershop about the, yeah um, at the barbershop yeah yeah yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 my barber was talking about buying amc shares <laughs> i was like bro you don't know like i was, it was, it was the last person i would have thought like we'll be talking about um the stock market and you know and like kwame said back in the day information people used to keep that closed chest yeah. but nowadays it's just you know we giving out game game to everybody and, and it's a dope thing to see it's a dope thing to see Discord groups like yours, Isaac's, um, so many, so many, so many young brothers. You know what I mean? Us black men just giving, giving game out, man. It, it's yeah. such a, an amazing thing to see. It's a difference. I don't know what it is about. I, I, well, you know, something big happened last year with George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, George Floyd family lived in Fayetteville, so like oh, wow. for wow. me, it was like you know what? One of the first things they told me was I couldn't protest because I'm in the army. I don't talk to the news. You can't protest. I'm go out wow. there. And it was like, bro, I'm not about to, yeah, I'm different. I'm not about to, you know. Yeah. And now it's like being your own boss, really, really being able to do what you want. But I'm still a respectful person. I'm not out there wilding yeah. and telling people I got this, I'm flat, none of that stuff. It's I have knowledge and I want to help you. You know, you yeah. don't have to learn from me. You don't have to stay in the Discord. I tell people all the time, you don't got to stay in the Discord. I told you, like, if you want to build your credit, go ahead and get the credit letters, get the knowledge you need, and you know, you're you gonna win. Yeah. But I, I really want the best of everybody. And it's, it's hard to it's hard to say how they wanted it back then when it was like, no, you told my start, <laughs> you lame, bro. We're gonna stand on this corner. We're gonna sell drugs. <laughs> I know, bro. <laughs> what are you talking but, about? Um, it, it, but I think a lot of that is access, right? Like, think yeah. about it. We it's easier for us to talk about these things because we all have a phone in our hand that yeah. there's an app that you can you just too. download and go do it. Like mm-hmm. if it wasn't for some like a company like Robinhood how many people would actually have access to going and, and, and opening up an account? True. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna lie, Robinhood did change the game because it made stocks simple. Like when people yeah. be like complaining about Robinhood, you got to take the good with the bad. It makes it super easy to get into it. Mm-hmm. Coinbase makes it super easy to get into crypto. Yeah. They're simple, but it works. Right. Uh, Cash App makes it simple to buy Bitcoin. Like you need those simplicities of the thing before you get to that advanced stuff. And we tell people all the time, it's okay being a beginner. Because people right away, they want to go straight to swapping coins and staking coins and farming coins and doing master nodes. And they don't know what they're doing and they're going to hurt themselves. 
But like I said, information there. If I said we have this conversation and I'm taking notes of what we're talking about right now, somebody's like, what's a rug pull? You can say, hey, Siri, what's a rug pull? <laughs> That's what we had the technology for yeah. no excuses anymore. Anything yeah. you want to know, Google's I'm going to Google it. I'm going yeah. to Google it and then write it to you. Yeah. Copy, paste it, and send it to you. But like, oh, thank you. And I've been thinking, like, man, they could do the same thing. But I don't be mad. But because yeah. I don't mind helping people. But at the same right. time, like, man, they could have just did the same thing I just did. Yeah. And and so, so Kwame, we we all we wanted to uh, also talk to you about. I know the Bitcoin conference was just uh, a few months ago. You were down there, at Crypto Kwame. Uh, you uh, mentioned you got like an Instagram follower bump after the yeah. conference. Also, um, if you could just talk to us a little bit about how was the conference. Um, what was it like? All those crypto crypto investors. I know it was like, tons of money down there in Miami. Yeah. Um, uh, how how was the crypto conference or the Bitcoin it, conference? It, it, so first, so so as to date, it was the biggest crypto conference so far. Wow. So you know, you see a lot more investors. You see a lot more people are paying attention when it comes to crypto, right? You know, go out there with Crypto Quavo, be out there with Lamborghini and everybody. You know, just that that car alone brings attention. Yeah, yeah. But it was just the energy of seeing people saying, like, yo, we got this car, but we got it from crypto. We got this conversation from crypto. We get the network with y'all from crypto. We met a lot of people. We met the the owner of Rap Snacks out there. Oh, wow. Wow. And he was just eating breakfast. Like, we, we were sitting <laughs> at one table. He sitting at another table, right? Word. I see uh, Quavo talking to him. You know, Quavo, he told anybody, you mm-hmm. know? And I seen him talking to him. He's like, yo, you know what that is? I'm like, nah. I was gonna, at first I thought it was Magic Johnson. I was like, man, you know, I don't want to like Magic Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Magic <laughs> Johnson just at the Bitcoin conference chilling. Yeah, chilling. So he said, nah, it was uh the owner of Rap Snacks. He's like, yeah, man, we shook his hand, talked to him, whatever, told him about crypto. He's like, yeah, man, I assume we're gonna start selling crypto with chips. And it's like mm. Miami is different because. They already got the machines where you can accept crypto and everything. They got I've Bitcoin machines. They uh, accept the crypto. We went out there to look at, like, we believe that cars, look at the Lamborghinis and stuff, right? They are accepting crypto as payment. So you can buy your Lamborghini, buy your Rolls Royce, buy your exotic car with your crypto. Now I say you don't want that car anymore. You go sell that car, go get your property, go get your house, go get your whatever. You know, you have a foundation of information and finances to go do that. Go to the Bitcoin conference, you, people talk about different coins, right? Coin, you don't even know what's going on. They're on the stage talking about some stuff. Man, I didn't even know about that. In the crowd, there's different sidebars of conversation, information. You never know. This could be the owner of uh, this yacht, right? Mm-hmm. And we have, because we also had a, a, a meeting on the yacht, right? Out there for everybody. It's an experience. Sometimes you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, you have absolutely. to get out of your own shell and just meet people and and, and network. And, and now it's like I'm going out there to really network with people more than anything because I done did the car thing and did the travel thing. The condo thing is cool, but it's like okay, cool. Who I who should I meet now? Because yeah. the last time I was networking, I was just sitting sitting to myself, not shaking hands, yeah. not answering questions. So now I'm gonna make sure I have my business cards with me. Yeah, I can say follow me on Instagram, but I want to give you something, you know. That will show you. I have my QR code on my business card and everything. My, my business card look like a black card. Yeah. Bruh, so, I tell you what, I, that was actually a takeaway for both me and Fees because the video there, I think there was like a video um, with you and Aristotle um, outside at the Bitcoin conference. And like our first takeaway, we were like, yo, like Kwame just walked, you just walked <laughs> right up. So he was like, yo, what's up? I'm Crypto Kwame. This is what I do. <laughs> nice to meet you. People, we didn't, you know, think about like, we were talking about how people used to be back in the day. Like people used to, you know what I mean? Want to be tough and you don't want to talk to people and just stand offish. But that's how you got to be. You got to go out there and yeah. network. Like, yo, what's up, man? Like, how, how you doing? You you helped me out, shout you out. And, and and yeah, I definitely wanted to give you props for that, man. That, that- What's crazy is that, now I appreciate it. What's crazy is like, he posted before me. So it wasn't yeah. a thing where it was like, no, I'm gonna post it. Yeah, I'm gonna use this. No, like he posted me uh-huh, and then uh-huh. he followed me. And then that's like what really helped, you know, grow my page or whatever. But at the same time, that night was crazy because I ain't gonna lie to you. So at Club Live, right? So we were the Blue Fountain, right? That's before you get to Club Live or whatever. Uh-huh. And you can't wear shorts there. So we had shorts on. So he's like, man, I guess we're gonna leave. We leave and I'll keep it real. Only one of us had pants. So 
my homeboy, get, like, with three of us out there, me, uh, Quavo, and, and, and Doe Dilla, we all out there, and Quavo, the only person that had jeans. So we borrowed his jeans, and they said, yo, we're going to run back. We all got down. He had some brand new jeans that they wore before. Yeah. He said, yeah, man, yeah, man. He, he mad because he like, he got some fresh jeans, <laughs> and we get to wear them first. It's like, it's like has some fresh J's and your homeboy, like, yo, bro, let me wear those shoes. So we get that so he let us borrow it. Sort of like both back. ours. <laughs> you need that show house. So we borrow it, right? So we sit in, we sit in the lobby or whatever, right? It's super packed. They like it cost forty thousand dollars to get a section in Club Live. Wow. He was like, no, <laughs> we gonna go outside. <laughs> we gonna go outside. We chilling outside. Somebody passing the Bugatti, right? That's the, the Bugatti in the back. Somebody passing yeah. the Bugatti, like, yo, it's crazy. Bugatti right there. Rolls Royce, fan. You see all this stuff. We stand up by the side, and Aristotle don't come stand next to us, right? Because mm-hmm. we, like, standing off from everybody else. We stand to the side. I ain't going to say exactly what was happening, but we yeah, standing yeah. to the side, and next thing you know, bro, they were just talking to us. I'm like, yo, what up, bro? I'm such and such. Like, it all happened organically. Yeah. You know? And people, people when I had people hit me up, like, yo, bro, Somebody, one of my friends sent me this of you. Like my brother, my sister, like, you know, my friends, people in the Discord, like, yo, call me that you. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, it just happened so organic. Like I said, like, that's Close networking. mouth don't get fat, man. Close yeah, it's all networking. Because I, I could have been on some cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you're too cool to, cool to, to show thing. love. Like, nah. like somehow, yep. somehow it makes you less by, by showing love to somebody else. Right. That, that but, but I'm, somebody I'm big flowers, on giving flowers. You know? yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm big on giving flowers because it's like, I wouldn't even know what Discord the app was. <laughs> until you know yeah so right. it's like and then they like say he was in the military also uh, you know he gave out free game so it's like you know what i appreciate that he didn't have to post me he didn't have to you know reach out he didn't have to come talk to us he didn't have to dap us up because he could have been on some cool stuff too you know right, right. and it was all love it was, it was it was an amazing experience and like look now all that from not even having that to getting like eight thousand followers overnight basically wow. you know in that so, time span so go so going from going to your first crypto conference to to now you're going to be yeah. hosting your own type of conference slash event. Oh, yeah. Like talk about that transition from you know <laughs> being the guy that was too shy to really say something, talk to anybody, to now you know getting getting paid to to talk to people uh, on oh, stage. All right, so August seventh we got Money in Motion. Uh, it's on Eventbrite. Uh, August seventh in Charlotte. Right. So from me saying, well, I know a little bit and I'm going to kind of do a Zoom to doing a conference. It's like going from first grade to getting a <laughs> master's in year, six bro. months. It felt like, like I feel yeah. like I graduated, then graduated, then graduated. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I went to one grade and another grade. No, I graduated, graduated, then graduated. Yo, but think about Everything. it, right? That, that, that's kind of like the whole the whole thing of like this whole revolution or, or, or era right now where it's like, yeah, it used to probably take people 10, 15, 20 yeah. years <laughs> to get access to the information that you get in a minute. You know what I mean? It's just how yeah. quickly can you process it? But so I know. And it's, and it's no, no, no. It's so much information also out there. So it's like, okay, cool. Well, what do I have to say to these people? And should I do a class or should I do a conference? Cause on a conference, you like, okay, what do I say? I know how to do a Zoom. I know how to do a class. I know how to talk about crypto. I know how to talk about Toro. I know how to talk about options. I know how to talk about all this stuff. But exactly how do I do a conference? So, you know, I'm going over it in my head. You know, first off, I'm like, you know, I still can't believe it. You know, like, I, I hit Isaac all the time, like, randomly. And I'm like, yeah, I definitely appreciate you, bro. He's like, damn, call me tripping. Like, nah, bro, like, I just, I pop up my head like that, bro. I wouldn't have any of this. Like, when people be like, yo, I'm an Isaac group and your group. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an Aristotle group. I see him on your, I see he posts you. Now I follow y'all too. I want to thank y'all. I'm like, bro, they didn't have to do any of this stuff. Isaac never had to post me on his page. Aristotle never had to post me on his page, you know? And now I know people that have Lamborghinis and McLarens and all this mm-hmm. crazy stuff and mansions and ex NFL players write me. And it's just, it's a humbling, eye opening experience to like, man, like I'm really doing something bigger than myself mm-hmm. and I'm enjoying the ride. Because and, I know it's bigger than me. Yeah, and and Kwame, uh, you you uh down there in Fayetteville, you know everybody also knows from Fayetteville is um, uh J Cole. Oh, yeah. uh, you 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 had an interaction with J Cole or, or J Cole's team also, right? Could, could you talk a yeah. little bit about that? So you know, Jake. So I mean, it wasn't. So all right, look, we first interactions was you know I still in army, you know he was 
the conversation used to be, you know, you think J. Cole better than Drake? And I'm like, who's J. Cole? Not like Shade, but I'm like, uh-huh. who's J. Cole? Like, I don't know. Bro, he from here. And I'm like, is he here? Like, no, he in New York right now. So I'm like, okay, cool. I do music too. He in New York. Let me listen. I said, nah, I don't do music like that. Now he way better than me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I, like hey, I do nice. music. No, he does music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, so, but he used to be at this club. I mean, I mean, I call it Big Al, but that's, that's the name of the club, right? We used to always go on Thursdays. And okay. I was like, yo, he used to just be in the back, talking, whatever, playing pool, chop it up, talk. No, no issues, whatever, right? Dreamville wasn't even a thing yet. But it was like, it was J. Cole, I keep it real, J. Cole, artist name Rain, and it was me and my friend. We was like the, the top rappers here, you know, it's like we were from here. But mm-hmm. to see his growth from, I'm talking about from the C's like me to Dreads like Lil Wayne, it's just, it, he just, he done blew up so fast. I'm talking about his, the way he speaks, like that's, I'm, I'm more intrigued with that. When he got a hundred mil and he's like, bro, none of that stuff impressed me. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need none of that stuff, you know? And see how he get back. He own a bunch of properties, right? He do, he give back so much to where he don't even talk about it, right? So I'm gonna give him his flowers without him knowing. He gives back in a way where he owns a lot of properties here for single mothers. He'll let them stay there for a year without paying rent. Wow. Right. He don't talk about this type of stuff. Right. But he owns a lot of properties out here where he does that just to get back to the community and they can stay for a year without paying rent, get on their feet, work, whatever, you know, save up, whatever, and then still live there if they want to. So he's an amazing person. You know, Murray is an amazing person. Murray, like I said, he just blew up. And he's like a super nice guy. You know, his team are super amazing people. Like, that's what I'm saying, like Dennis Smith Jr., right? Dennis Smith Jr. from Fayetteville also. I, think he, I mean, he got drafted. You know, he's in the league still. Just to see people like that, from, from where like, you, yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah, like I'm talking about from protesting, right, and seeing how important it is for my boy King, who works at the Favorite Observer, to meet Tony and J Cole is there, and then Dennis Smith Jr. is there, right, and then Murray wasn't big yet. Now Murray is going on tour with J Cole and Twenty One Savage. Like, it's just dope to see how fast. Well, it's not even fast because I feel like it's overnight, but I'm like, damn, man. Last year, this time I was protesting. Yeah. I see my right. phone with memories and stuff. Last year, this time we was protesting. Right. Everybody was jumping into Walmarts. <laughs> like, like, like yeah. running through the malls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, look what we talk about financial literacy. A year, literally a year yeah, later, literacy, yeah. after all that craziness, we talk about financial literacy and empowering our people. It's crazy. Full 360. And you 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 made a mention about how um how J Cole gives back um to Fayetteville and um I want to make sure that you you're you know provide an opportunity to talk about the things you're doing to give back. I know you um we talked offline a little bit about about your book uh, your children. Yeah. Book. You want to you know give a little like kind of preview of what exactly you're working on. So I currently have four children books already completed. Well, three. Well, four completed. One coming out on Saturday. It's for charts for kids, breaking down chart analysis. Okay. Uh, we have a you credit charts book. for kids. Charts for kids, yeah. Teaching them how to use the charts in wow. the simplest form, simplest terms, everything, right? But also in the book, I have a parent section in the back. And I was talking to some of the schools, you know, trying to get the books in the schools, and that's not the curriculum, right? That's not the thing that. So we're building our own school. We're also being a, a community for autism, right? Oh, nice. Wow. So, yeah, so we're, we're doing things in a space where we're bridging the gap of knowledge of different things, right? The, there's a community called the, uh, the biggest uh, the, the biggest crypto play ever. They have a coin called Altcoin. It's for autism, right? So mm-hmm. we're doing stuff that actually means something. We're That's using cool. cryptocurrency for actual utilization and for something bigger than ourselves. Because I know me giving back to the community, I'm one person. You know, we see what they did to Martin. You know, we've seen what they did to a lot of the prominent leaders in our community. So it's not about having one person know this stuff. It's about having a whole classroom. And I say, yeah, y'all know what crypto is? And everybody raised their hand. And everybody can't wait to answer the question. I'm not talking about raise their hand like, yeah, we know what it is. Like, I'm talking about they ready to, they ready to drop Excited. the gems on me. Like, right. I want that. No, that's that's dope. And that 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 kind of goes back to the whole overall message um, of, of like your story is just trying to uh, you know impact as many people as possible. And, and in a meaningful way. Um, and, and with that, you know, what's uh, one thing I want to, you know, kind of kind of give to our uh, our listeners that they probably won't hear other, other places, just uh, 
let's call it like a Kwame's free play of the day. How about that? That's, that's off the top. Uh, <laughs> uh, why don't, can you give your top three altcoins that either you're either currently invested in or you uh, view as having, um, you know, uh, a long, a long lasting um, impression in the crypto space? Okay, so I will start with this. An altcoin is nothing but an alternative coin. Everything else is an altcoin compared to Bitcoin. That's the only reason it's called an altcoin, okay? So, a simple answer, Ethereum. I believe Ethereum is going to do amazing in the future. Cardano, I feel like Cardano is going to do amazing in the future. I'm big into, I would say, Tron. Not so much as far as the time, because I've been, you know, following Justin Sun. He's the uh, developer of the coin. For a while now, the coin moved moving a little slow. But I feel like the coin is going to do good in the future. Cardano, uh, Ethereum, Tron, i probably say one more VeChain. VeChain, the use cases, one of the best use cases, uh, use cases of all, you know, the authentication of everything. I mean, you got to think, they're, the reselling of sneakers, purses, dresses, shirts, authenticating all your stuff so you know that it's real. Why well, do you think Nike, Nike's reselling their stuff now also, you know? Mm. They're, they're going to be in a position where they keep all the money in-house because you're going to know, okay, this is fake. I mean, it still look real. So I'm like, I'm going to give you a thousand for it. Make you afford it. Because <laughs> I know it ain't real. But Nike said, so you know what? That's fake. It's not on the blockchain. It's not tokenized. So now we're not going to utilize that, right? You got to you cease and desist. You got to shut down that whole factory. So then what they're going to have to do, they're going to have to figure out a way to add crypto to the fake stuff. And mm. then that coin is going to do well because it's going to be a copycat of one of the other smart contracts. Then that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, I feel like people that don't understand crypto are probably like, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> I know, right? Who's chain? Yeah. <laughs> Two chains. Yo, and sometimes <laughs> I forget like, about that. Yo. So sometimes I forget, like, yo, I'm like, I'm like tapped into what he's I'm like, yo, does that make sense? But I'm like, yo, nah, there's like a lot of people <laughs> smart like, contracts. Yo, <laughs> imagine imagine you hearing this three months ago, you'd be like, what are they yeah, right. talking about? Like <laughs> real talk. Whose contract? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> and that's about that's about when we first spoke. So from then to now. Like I said, even for you to, to, to boom, knowledge on what's, yeah. what's, what's a rug pull, what's an altcoin, yeah. what's this, what's that, it's like how to stake, how to mine, how to do, it's, it's all important. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy how like 99 Hustles is, is, is important to really not have everything praying to God, I hope this coin does, you don't need that when it comes yeah. to what we're doing, what we're teaching y'all. There's so many ways to get money. They, the Navy Fat Play is one thing, right? That's one LLC. You can have 10 LLCs. They can give you $100,000 each time. You can make a million dollars in your first. It's so many easy ways to get money now. But now it's how you utilize it. You got a million dollars for Navy Fed now. Now what you do? How many cars you get from Turo? How many properties you going to get for Airbnb? You know, how, if you want 10x that, now you got 10 million. You pay back that 1.3 or 1.4 because the interest, you don't take out from that. Right? If you do it right, you get a... A balance transfer check where you get uh, your, uh, your interest rate is uh, zero for the first 18 months and you do a balance transfer check. So now you just took that money, you don't flip it in a year, you don't 10x it, you don't pay that back before the interest rate even hits. Now you don't got you $9 million and you don't get back that million dollars that need from the bank. Now the bank will let you like, you know what, we don't get you a million. Now we're going to give you 200000 per LLC now, 300000 per LLC now. And now you don't need it because you have that capital, that free capital that you started from the bank. I feel like my credit score just went up just <laughs> based off that answer. <laughs> or, uh, um, so Kwame, one thing we always ask um, the guests that we have on our podcast is uh, what's your hustle mantra? Now your hustle mantra is like a quote or a phrase that like, you know, that defines how you live your life or how you run your business. Yeah. Um, what, what would you, what would your hustle mantra is? I would say it's, it's something I got from 19 Keys. He said, what you do frequently becomes your frequency. Mm -hmm. So basically, you stay consistent. If you want to be successful, you got to be consistent. You can't say, you know, you, you, you fail, you lose a race. Shakari Richardson, right? She go down. Oh, no, it ain't over. It's still the beginning. Stay consistent. Still go train. Because when it comes to the Olympics, you're going to show up, show up and show out. And four years later, she'll do the same thing. So it's being consistent. So what you do frequently becomes your frequency. That's that's tough, man. That's uh, I feel like that's that, you know, that kind of embodies your whole thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just like 
being in the military and then using that same kind of discipline and mentality to, to into crypto, like you mentioned in, you know, 2017, where everybody got out of it and, you know, whether good luck or not, you held strong. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, I mean, look, I done, I done jumped out of planes. I done been over this. I was at a special forces unit for like 12 years and we went on crazy deployments and seeing some crazy stuff and seeing some motors and rockets and incoming and all this. And none of that stuff, I feel like I had to go through it though. It was a part of my story. Like your failures, your trials, your tribulations, the stuff that make you think like, hey, man, I don't even want to get out of the bed today. Those moments, are when, what you're going to realize, I remember last time I was like being lazy. I didn't get nothing accomplished that day. Nothing came from it. So this time I'm not doing that. I'm going to go out there and go get it. I'm going to go do this. I'm going I'm to make today count because you never know when it's your time. One of my best friends uh, from middle school, you know, we were probably what, fourth grade to eighth grade. And I'm talking about childhood, childhood, like the beginning years when you think you're grown. And you walk around the street by yourself and stuff like that. You know, he passed away last Thursday, you know, and my age. So it's like, I mean, I, I can't say enough for granted, you know, R.P. the scholar. But, you know, it's, R. P. The scholar, it's yeah. so much R. in life where, where when I look back and I'm like, most of the friends that I grew with from high school, either men killed or they're dead. Something got to change. Something I'm talking about from childhood. I'm talking about my little brother's friends, my, you know, cousins, cousin friends, like right. those people are gone. Something has to change. And I want to do that for my community and make a change. I want to be, if I could give somebody a little bit of hope that, yeah, I mean, he made it. He did the army for 13 years. You know, he, he made it out the hood or whatever. A lot of people think for the suburbs because I'm so, <laughs> the way I talk. Because you so no, polished. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Far right away, ain't the hood. <laughs> hey, you want to you go on a nice vacation? Go to Far Rockaway. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. go, go to Far Rockaway. Go on the beach. Stroll. Yeah. You'll you, you see. So nah, you say I, same I things like staking. You say staking. Yeah. They're like, oh, he from the suburbs. He's talking about yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> blockchain. Nah, it's, it's, must have forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's, but that's the same thing. I've but I always been respectful. I always grew up right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I try to. My biggest thing growing up, I was always like, man, I never made my mother mad because my mother, five, my mother was a single mother with five kids. You know, twenty five. She, we, we, I had a chance to be no kid and just not help her. Yeah. Mm. Not, 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 not. The last thing she needed was extra stress of me out there doing stupid stuff. So I never was that. My mother would let me do it. I'm talking about I'm 16, 17, going to my friend's house, going to my home at two in the morning. And my mother's like, not even tripping. I'm like, Ma, like, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. She's like, No, nah, you're a good kid. I know you do nothing stupid. Wow. No, like, well, I, I used to always think like my mother's like the first person I used to think like people trust me too much, trust and I still say that to this day. I, I, I know I, I ain't gonna do nothing, but somebody be like, "Man, I give you hundred thousand dollars to invest in me." I'm like, "Bro, why you trust me so much?" <laughs> nah, bro, I, just, I do, and I, I it, 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 it's what's been carrying me. My my, my energy, my mm-hmm. knowledge, the person that I am, the respect that I have for other people. It's what, what got me here to where I am today. So I'm never taking it for granted. Even y'all, I appreciate y'all having me on here. Like I said, y'all don't have to. You know, y'all don't have to put me on your platform in any type of way. And y'all don't have to go through our journey with, together with us, you know? But y'all see, you know, we're growing. You know, I mean, I, I can't even imagine a Discord with 11,000 people. So that, that's 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 a whole nother... It, it, it's going to be me responding to nobody. <laughs> 11,000 people? Hey, bro, hey, respect to that, brother. Him and Isaac, I respect the, hey, respect the Aristotle and Isaac because all the people in my district ask me the same question over a hundred times. Go to YouTube, the video on YouTube. That's gonna be that's gonna be every day. You gotta get those Watch admins, videos man. before you start. Watch all these videos before you, you gotta you start. get those admins ready. That's all. That's all. You're, you're almost there. Yeah, and the admins on fire too. Like I said, once once we get to a certain amount of people in Discord, I put them on the payday, put them on the payroll. Now look, nobody work. Everybody made six figures. Your family, you can tell, hey, look, I know I know this stuff. This is what we do for a living. Do this, you ain't got to work. Nieces and nephews, you ain't got to work. You ain't got to go to college if you don't want to. So that's what I'm trying to set it up for. Like, like, look, another another free gym, you know? So every single kid make a couple thousand dollars in their income tax season, right? One or two thousand, whatever, fifteen hundred. Every kid should have eighteen thousand dollars by the time they're 18. A parent should save a thousand dollars every single year from that, put into an interest bearing account. Or into a coin, but that has that has some stake rewards to it. But that's twenty thousand dollars every kid at eighteen. Make them authorized use to, to your credit. Now they have good credit. They have twenty thousand dollars. 
They don't need to co-sign for a car, so they're not pulling you down as a parent. Get them an LLC. They have an LLC at 14. You know why? Or probably even younger because they can have a YouTube channel and have a business. Mm. So they have an LLC. They have business credit. They have personal credit. They have $20,000 in the bank and they're authorized you to sell your credit cards. You don't actually need the card. You're setting the next generation up with no money out of pocket to be successful. Every parent can do this. There's no excuse. And that's Kwame's parent gem of the day. Um, and I don't have so no much, kids. So much game. And he <laughs> has no kids. That's the best part. <laughs> that's the way I think. That's how, that's such, he's such a nice guy. He's giving, he's giving parental tips. He don't even have kids. <laughs> Word. Oh, man. Um, wow. Um, don't really know what, what else to really say beyond uh, uh, thank thank you, Kwame, for uh, 100%. for taking this time, taking the time to, to chop it up with us. 100%. Um, real quick. You. Where um where can people find you? You want to shout out your Instagram and, and, and your Discord and, and where people can oh yeah so tap in with you when 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 I was Kwame Stove on Instagram ain't nobody want to follow me now hey it's crypto Kwame it's crypto Kwame <laughs> I forgot you didn't change it's <laughs> crazy right that is I'll do myself hey it's, but it's crypto Kwame uh crypto K W A M B just like my name is spelled and you come on there I give uh free watch this. Here and there, I try not to do it every day because people in the Discord actually you know pay money for it, so I don't want to dis- uh, disservice them. But I try to give as much free game as possible for credit. Uh, I have a video got like over eleven thousand views on it. It's how to get a vehicle in your business name. That's really important when it comes to commercial uh, insurance and stuff like that for your vehicles. But yeah, you know it's all about sharing the knowledge. And thank y'all for your time. No, absolutely. Um... And with that, that's a wrap for this week's episode. Thanks for listening to the 99 Hustle podcast. Please be sure to visit 99hustle.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our amazing bonus content. Please rate, review, and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Always remember, there are 99 hustles. All you got to do is choose one. Choose one. 99 hustles.